Hello friends. Now today we are going to see the Coriolis component of acceleration. So what is exactly this Coriolis component of acceleration? So here, first of all, this Coriolis component of acceleration it is uh, applicable to the Schaeffer machine. Means where we are using this slotted link in which the sliders they are sliding. The best example is the Schaeffer machine or crank and slotted lever mechanism or with work equipment mechanism. So here, if you see. First of all, this is the link OA, in which this link OA, slider C or slider B is placed here. On this link OA, slider B is placed. And C is the point on the slider. Here, C is the point on the slider. The link length of OA is suppose R. And now this link OA is having some angular velocity omega. So if this link is having some angular velocity omega, then there will be some displacement that is angular displacement, which is given by del theta. And here, if we are saying that this link OA is the slotted link in which this slider B it is sliding, as it is now moving in this sense, that is in anticlockwise sense with some angular velocity omega, then this slider it will try to move outside. Means it will try to move in upward direction. And whatever the movement or the, whatever the motion of the slider in upward direction is nothing but the slider velocity that is given by small v. So here, if you see, so these are the velocity polygon for the respective link OA, in which whatever the trajectory, this point C, this point C is nothing but the point C, if you see here, this point C is nothing but the point C on the slider B. So it will trace and this R, but the velocity of this point C will be perpendicular to this link length OA. So it is given by R into omega. Means this velocity will be of the link OA, and this slider velocity will be along the link length OA, which is given by V plus del V. So here the Coriolis component means it exists in where the slider will be having outward velocity. So for this Coriolis component of acceleration, there will be three components. One will be radial, which is acting parallel to the link length OA. Another will be tangential, which is perpendicular. And third will be along the slide. Then what are the formulas? The same the formulas are same as that of the first acceleration component. That is for radial, it is product of link length into square of angular velocity. Then the tangential component is the product of link length into angular acceleration or the corresponding length. And the Coriolis component is the two times of product of angular velocity into the slider velocity. So this is the basic difference for the acceleration component and Coriolis component of acceleration. So here, these are the basic directions for the Coriolis component. As we are not having the numerical part, we are having only theoretical part. So these are the sign conventions. So if suppose, this link OA and this letter B is placed on this link OA. If it is having in this means your link OA is rotating in this sense and your slider is moving outward, then this is the direction of the Coriolis component. And here, if it is in this direction, it is moving outward, then it will be the Coriolis component will be in the direction of that rotation. And reverse is the case when it is having this anticlockwise sense and your slider is coming in opposite direction, then the component will be acting in opposite direction. So similar is the case for the clockwise also. And your slider velocity means the slider is coming in downward direction. So this convention, sign conventions are used to plot the Coriolis component. That is a product of two into angular velocity into slider velocity. Now here we will see the basic concept of the Coriolis. Sometimes we use the term straight as a bullet, but strictly speaking, no bullet fired on the Earth's northern or southern hemisphere follows a straight line. So let's find out why no one is shooting straight, literally. And for that, we are going to place ourselves into outer space, right above the North Pole, and watch a cannon shell fired from the North Pole. So let's go and zoom into that region over here. Here we have this shell in the form of this red arrow. And we'll be firing it along this 
straight line. So I'll start the animation now. There. Uh, you'll observe that as the shell is you know, progressing along its path, the earth is rotating underneath. So nothing surprising is happening. The shell starts and goes in a straight line. What is interesting to watch here is the shell's relative path as traced on the earth. So this dotted white curve shows uh, all the places or it connects all the places that come under the shell as it progresses on its trajectory. So let us summarize what we just observed. We observed one shell that was fired and it went straight. So the trajectory was straight and uh, there was no force, deflecting force acting on it. And this is quite predicted by Newton's law, which says if there is no force, there is no acceleration. So no deflecting force, no deflection. So Newton's law is essentially acting correctly over here. About this frame, we will talk in a moment. Let us now shift our vantage point. Okay? So we are going to observe the same interaction, but this time we are going to place ourselves on the earth itself. So the earth will be fixed. We will not see its motion anymore. And uh, let's fire the cannonball again. Here. And surprise, surprise, this time, the cannonball is not going straight anymore, but it is following a curved trajectory. This is nothing but the relative path that we plotted earlier on the Earth's surface, this white dotted curve, and the shell is following it. This is what all the bullets and shells fired in northern hemispheres do. They take a right turn. And those fired in the southern hemisphere take a left turn. So let us once again summarize what we observed now sitting on the earth, that we observed a shell taking a curved trajectory, but still there was no force acting on it. There was no observable force that actually deflected it. So although we saw a deflected, uh, a curved trajectory, uh, accelerated motion, there was no apparent force that was causing it. And this is violation of Newton's law. We are seeing acceleration without a force. So Newton's law of inertia is violated here. Now, who is to blame for this? Well, it is the surrounding from which we are observing it. Uh, the technical term for surrounding is a frame or frame of reference. So a frame of reference or a surrounding where Newton's law of inertia doesn't hold good it isn't directly applicable is called a non-inertial frame. While well, frames where it, it works directly is called an inertial frame. The acceleration that we just observed is called Coriolis acceleration. And it is experienced by all bodies that are moving in a surrounding or a frame of reference that is rotating. Finally, let us see the situation where we would encounter Coriolis acceleration in mechanisms. So suppose you have this slotted link and it is rotating about this point with angular velocity omega. And there is a slider which is sliding with velocity v on this rotating slotted link. In that case, the slider will experience a Coriolis acceleration given by two times the cross product omega bar cross v bar. Alternatively, the direction of Coriolis acceleration can also be found by rotating the velocity vector by 90 degrees in the direction of omega. Thank you.